Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures, home of the quarantined wargamer. And today I want to talk about subjects that are unsuitable for the game table. So a recent parcel that arrived here uh, contains some civilians um, and, and I've just recently painted them up uh, and I will be using them on my particular games table. So these civilian models are from Peter Pig and I've got refugees and, and other general civilian type figures. Um, but it does beg the question and has started a bit of a conversation with various friends of mine about what actually belongs on the games table. At the end of the day, if they don't have a game value, um, you know, uh, as in that they affect the outcome of the game, then why, why would we have them on the games table at all? Um, I mean, some people, uh, I've heard this said uh, on plenty of occasions over the years, that you know, including things like civilians on the games table, is actually not something that people like to see. They don't think it's very sa a, a, a savoury subject, particularly refugees and things like that, um, on a games table. Um, and it's always surprised me, really, because historical wargamers, we're usually pretty obsessive about accuracy. Um, but we then we leave out certain details. So things like casualties, aid stations, refugees, things like that, don't often feature. Sometimes they'll turn up in a demo game. Um, you know, but we'll include things like burned out buildings and destroyed vehicles. Um, so so you know, we have, there is a bit of a... a, a, a a difference of opinion is probably the nicest way of putting it in amongst the gaming community about what belongs on the games table. And clearly there, there's a line that some people aren't prepared to cross and where that line is will depend on the person. Uh, uh, and so I just wanted to sort of really sort of touch on it a little bit. You know, how much realism is too much on the games table? Um, uh, so, uh, you know, should our hobby sanitise the realities of war or can an argument be made to include these sort of elements on our games tables on a bit more of a regular basis not just in demo games at shows. Now I think for me the question comes down to are we playing for entertainment or self-education? You know, I think most, and, and this is a generalisation, but most historical war gamers would recognise both motives uh, as to why they're there in front of that games table with those figures playing that particular uh, encounter that historical action or whatever. Um, you know, some if it's if it's the latter, you know, the education. Then some elements, while unpalatable, are necessary to tell the story of a particular period or event. Um, and of course, the the setting, the time period in which the the uh, the game you're going to play does affect people's. Um, uh, uh, what they are comfortable with. I mean, broadly speaking, the further back in time you go, the less squeamish you are, um, and uh, you know, and the more modern the conflict, that can be too raw for some people. Um, however, the reality is, you know, the, the basic reality is, is that war is always brutal, and you know, and, and you know, regardless of the periods, just we've just found different, more interesting ways of killing each other. Um, uh, but essentially, war is the same thing, whether that's um, dark ages or, or modern. You know, it, it, it's a brutal business, um, and we've, for good or bad, chosen to turn this into uh, a hobby. Now, obviously, uh, historical war gamers, we look at it from the point of view that we're learning the history. So it's very much, you know, it's part entertainment, but it is also uh, about education, self-education, historical. You know, researching the facts and understanding the, the politics and the, the the strategy of a particular encounter or situation, um, and uh, you know the the following. I'm going to give a few examples below, just a few, about uh, three, um, of things that people find uncomfortable, uncomfortable levels of realism in their war games tables. Now, I've picked these particular three. Um, not because I think they're more important than other issues, but because they're things that I have seen used in demo games to very good effect. Um, but also, I know that the three areas that I'm about to discuss have also been hotly debated. You know, you've only got to go to any war games forum to know that some people blow hot and cold on these subjects and that the debate can get quite heated, as, as does a lot of debate these days. So the first area that we're going to look at is the use of casualties on the games table. Now many miniatures manufacturers include casualty figures in their ranges. Um, you know, it's quite common to be able to buy 
models of dead or injured soldiers that you can use as casualty markers. Um, and, and you know, and there are a very visual way of recording unit effectiveness um, you know as, as men get taken out of the action um, and that, you know they're, 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 you can use them either as markers or you can make little vignettes up that you're going to leave at certain points on the table to show where the actions taken happened um, you know, I've seen a couple of really good games where um, the use of casualty figures really helped show the ebb and flow of a particular battle because you'd have areas where you, you know lots of casualties there and then another line of casualties where another set of melees took place. Uh, a really good example was a, an Alamo game that I saw at Cavalier some years ago. I'll try and put a, a photo for you to see. Um, and that was just, that was quite awe-inspiring to see. Um, uh, you know, as the game progressed during the course of the day, I went and saw this game several times, and and the amount of casualty figures being used on the games table was was more than I've ever seen used. But it was very illustrative. It made the game look very interesting, but it also showed the reality of that particular fight. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, so that was a good example of them using it for the visual effect, but also because it showed where the fighting had been taking place. Um, but it can also be used, casualty figures can also be used as a sort of a storytelling element. So for instance, um, you know, the use of aid stations in, in rear areas. Um, you know, again, I've seen demo tables where you've had aid stations and they've lovely little vignettes with interesting character figures and things going on, ambulances coming to and forth. And, uh, you know, of course, you can actually incorporate things like that into... A game itself is more than just an interesting piece of scenery on the edge of the table. It can actually be an integral part of the game itself. So, um, you know, for instance, if you've got a working aid station, you could have some rules that perhaps allow a percentage of casualties to be returned, in effect, a saving throw. Um, uh, you know, or, or casualties that get saved at the, the, the aid station can count against losses when you're counting up victory points. Um, you know, Chain of Command, for instance, uses medics to, to help. You know, you'd put a medic figure up there at the front and they help keep uh, commanders in the game. They, you know, uh, they help negate some of the, the, the wounds that they might take. So there are visual ways of using these sort of things, casualties and aid stations and, and medics and so on. Um, and having them in a game um, and having them play part of that game uh, but they can also be used, particularly in big demo games, it shows as a really good way of showing the rear areas behind where the fighting is taking place. And they're very interesting in their own right. Um, and, and obviously the level of realism you want to go into is entirely depends on, on the players and of course the audience that you're playing it to. You know, if you're playing amongst friends and you're all, all okay with it, you can have it as gruesome as you like. Um, but I would suggest that perhaps um, you know, Vikings performing blood eagles is probably not an appropriate subject for a demo show a game at a show where you might have family groups, for instance, coming to see. Um, but again, it, they're part of the history, they're part of... Uh, the period you might be playing and and whether that is acceptable to you will really be a matter of personal preference. So now we get to the reason why I'm doing this video at all, the use of civilians on the games table um, and in particular I'm thinking in terms of the use of refugees. Now you know they're a fact of war for any period regardless of whether it's I don't know dark ages right up to modern times um, and, and I imagine the experience of the refugees themselves is broadly similar regardless of the period. You know, grab what's most important to you and your family and you get going. Um, and of course in real life, refugees can be both a hindrance to operations or the whole reason why a force is in a particular area, you know, particularly modern day humanitarian actions. Um, so how can we use civilians um, and, and refugees in particular on the games table? Well, an obvious consideration would be things like uh, blocking supply routes. You know, you can't bring armour up that road because it's clogged with civilians. This is a very real world example that you can put on the games table. And of course, in more modern day conflicts, you might make the protection of civilians fleeing a particular area one of your mission objectives. You know, get those uh, people off the games table. Um, uh, and, and again, going back to the tactical considerations for real world battles, you know, do you really want a carpet bomb on that part of the city when the evacuation hasn't occurred yet? So again, you can work that into particularly larger games, you know, you have to uh, balance clearing out civilians with your mission objectives. Um, 
Uh, and another area that you could consider is also the use of things like hostages, um, modern day considerations. You know, are you going to be sending in skirmish type troops to clear hostages from an area um, and get them off the table as part of your mission objectives? Um, so I, I, mean, I always consider that if you leave civilians out of a game's table, I mean, you don't have to force them into a game, but if you're going to leave them out all the time, you are in, in effect making an essential part of that landscape that you're fighting in disappear. Um, uh, you know, it's something that I think should be considered appropriately um, for use on the games table. I've seen it used plenty of times in demo games and it really does help tell the story and I've done videos on story and narrative before. It tells the story of a particular historical setting. You know, it's one thing when you can fight a battle across the battlefield where you've cleared everyone out of the way and everyone's lined up and you're ready to fight. Um, but modern day fight battles, you know, Second World War onwards are much more complicated than that. There's usually civilians and infrastructure in the way. And to not include them is to remove an important element in a game. So now we come to a very, very touchy subject. War crimes and war criminals. So... Depicting units that have committed war crimes on the table is a very hotly debated subject. It can be very touchy for people, and I totally understand that. You know, should the, the, the question often comes up, and the debate is often revolves around: should we even represent these units on the games table? Um, uh, and again, time scale is important. The more modern, the more raw. Um, but, you know, the same question sh should be asked if you're going back even further. You know, a particular unit that's committed a, an atrocity, for instance, should it even be featured in a game of entertainment? Um, but, of course, we're more than just playing a game of entertainment. We're playing historical war games. You know, we're not playing fantasy or sci-fi where you can do whatever you're going to do. Whereas if we're playing a historical game, if these units featured in a particular battle, you can't just remove them entirely. Now, of course, at the same time, you definitely shouldn't be thinking about glorifying or sanitising them in any way. Um, uh, you know, we need to acknowledge the history, is basically what I'm trying to say. I think it's very important. Um, you know, if you're going to include these units, you need to acknowledge it. Particularly if you're doing a demo game, you know, tell the story, tell, tell the history, so explain what, what they did um, and why they're still on the games table, that they played an important part here. Um, uh, you know, removing them entirely is just sanitising history, and I'm, I'm not particularly comfortable with that myself. Uh, I'm less comfortable with including those units than I am with removing them from history entirely. Now, there are other subjects that I haven't discussed for two reasons, really. Firstly, I've not seen them used in demo games, and secondly, I, I wouldn't actually include them myself, so um, you know, I, I don't feel able to, to comment properly on something that I wouldn't use myself. Um, so ex examples would be depictions of actual war crimes taking place, or acts of terrorism, or images of torture or executions. Um, uh, I, I personally am not very comfortable with using anything similar to that in a game that is at least in part an entertainment. Um, uh, you know, including casualties and civ civilians adds a layer of storytelling narrative to a game and they can be justifiable if they're done tastefully um, and sensitively of course um, um, and ultimately it's about context it's about the audience you're going to be playing the game in front of and and handling delicate subjects as i say in a sensitive manner but you may feel differently about some of these things so what i would say is you know what are your lines in the sand what do you feel comfortable using on the games table are you comfortable with using things like civilians refugees hostages casualties aid stations depictions of the dead you know on the games table do you think this whole conversation is completely pointless and of course we should be using them i'd love to hear from you um uh, and uh, i'd love to have a little bit of a conversation in the in the comments below as usual i'd ask everyone to be uh, respectful and, and polite because the views will no doubt vary enormously amongst the gaming community so anyway i hope you've uh, enjoyed that video and found it useful and interesting perhaps maybe it's going to spark a little bit of conversation and of course if you did enjoy the video as always i'd say please like subscribe and share so until next week, as always, stay safe, get in as many games as you can, and of course, keep rolling high.